Hello there. Thank you ever so much for tuning into this SMA UK webinar. Uh, the topic today is newborn screening for SMA. What's happening now in the UK? And I'm your host, Toby Milden. I'm a trustee of SMA UK. I've been involved in the charity for a very long time. Uh, and I've also got SMA myself. So I'm in my 40s now, but I was born and diagnosed with SMA um, when I was about one. I've got type 2 SMA. So um, it's really great that I'm joined by um, such a great panel uh, today. So we've got uh, Laurent Sauvé, uh, who is a statutory professor of paediatric neuromuscular diseases at the University of Oxford. Uh, he's also the chair of the UK SMA Newborn Screening Alliance. I'm also joined by Alice um, Faber, who's project manager at the UK SMA Newborn Screening Alliance, and Faye Yarath. Uh, who is Head of Campaigns and Policies for Muscular Dystrophy UK and a member of the UK SMA Newborn Screening Alliance Steering Group. And then finally, Portia Thorman, who is our Advocacy Lead at SMA UK and is also a member of the UK SMA Newborn Screening Alliance and Steering Group. So um, it's lovely to see you all today. Thank you ever so much for, for joining us on this very important topic. So um, my first question actually goes to uh, Laurent. Um, could you just briefly give us an overview of the clinical and cost effectiveness evidence supporting newborn screening for SMA um, and where things stand globally presently? Uh, sure. There are two strategies if you want to demonstrate the cost effectiveness. The first one is to start counting, right? And to count every single cent, every single penny um, that the patients with, with the um, SMA uh, 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 cost, and of course, um, the cost of the treatment. And so that's what we did um, in this paper. Uh, this is Weedward data, right? Um, and we actually um, measure, we measured exactly how much cost patients if they are treated before symptoms or at birth, if they are identified by newborn screening to be, to be very rigorous, or if they're not identified by newborn screening. So this is uh, raw data from, from South and Belgium. And what we can see is that, um, however, if you consider the two, the three or the four copies, patients who are identified by newborn screening cost much less. And then you can um, then try to build the model. And uh, that's what we did in this paper, which is now public um, on a, a public platform. It's cost effectiveness of newborn screening for spinal muscular atrophy in England and Wales. So we build the model and we say, look, I mean, of course, if we identify patients by newborn screening, we could miss those um, with point mutations. We could also have some patients who present with, with symptoms. Um, and, um, and so we, we took into consideration all possible, you know, um, aspect. Um, and we try to make a lifetime long model, considering that, of course, there are plenty of, of, of factors uh, that may change. So some are data driven, some are, um, you know, discussed between experts. But the most important is that this is this, the, the, the table uh, that we need to, to, to understand is that if we have newborn screening, one, we save a lot of quality. What is a quality? It's a year with full quality of life. It's a lifetime, uh, it's a, a year of life with full quality of life. This is a quality. And normally um, in the UK, we are ready to pay about 20,000 pounds for a quality. That's our willingness to pay. With newborn screening, we do not pay per quality. We receive money. So it means that each time that we save a quality, because of newborn screening, we do not have to give money for that. We just receive money per quality that we save, which makes it a no-brainer, absolutely no-brainer. So whatever you consider it using um, um, using um, uh, raw data or modeling um, the situation, at the end of the day, you save money. That, that's brilliant, Laurent. Thank you ever so much for, for giving us an answer to, to that question. Um, moving on to Alice now. Um, Alice, could you tell us um, who is uh, in the Alliance and why, um, and talk us through how conditions are assessed 
uh, and see whether they should be screened for in the UK. Yeah, hi, Toby. So um, the UK SMA Newborn Screening Alliance is a coalition of clinicians, academics and patient organisations who have come together because they all really strongly believe that newborn screening for SMA should happen now. Um, we're all we're all very close to the evidence that exists to support this. And I think there's a really clear case that we shouldn't delay um, agreeing that newborn screening um, should be permitted in the UK. So that's the decision for the UK National Screening Committee. Um, we have also got an industry reference group that we work with, which is comprised of some of the companies that have created these amazing new treatments that exist for for patients with SMA um, and also the screening manufacturers who manufacture the equipment that's used to diagnose people with SMA. So we've got a really good network of people who are very close to the issues um, and we're using their expertise to make a really strong case to the UK National Screening Committee um, and to support them in the work that they're doing to assess SMA for newborn screening. And the way that they do that is they've got quite a tried and tested process with a number of criteria. I think there are 20 in total that look at different factors related to the test, the screening process, um, how that would actually play out in the NHS as well. And until they're happy that all of those criteria have been met, they won't um, agree to recommend newborn screening for SMA. So we're doing our absolute best to provide everything we can to make sure that they make a positive decision. Thanks. And I understand that SMA was considered in 2018, but it wasn't recommended. Could you explain to us why that was? Yeah, so the decision in 2018, um, there were some specific reasons given by the UK National Screening Committee. So they said there was limited evidence on how well the test predicted SMA, no evidence to show how effective a screening programme would be, no evidence for effective treatments for people who didn't have symptoms of SMA, um, and limited information about um, emerging treatments. Yeah, th thanks, Alice. I mean, clearly things have changed since then, um, and I'm aware that the NSC are reviewing this decision. Um, could you tell us a bit more about how this is getting done and, and how long it will take? Yeah, so um, the UK NSC have started their review, which is really positive. There was a bit of a delay to getting started, which I think was quite frustrating um, to the community that are closest to this. Um, but they have reassured us that they want to... Um, make a decision as quickly as possible. In fact, in meetings that we've had so far, they've talked about the need for speed. Um, and as I said, we're doing everything we can to support that need for speed, um, make sure that a decision is made ASAP. Um, so what's happened so far is um, an organisation called um, the Sheffield School of Health and Related Research has been commissioned to do some work around SMA. So they're conducting a systematic literature review, which means they're looking for every single paper that's been published since the 2018 um, review of SMA that might help address some of those gaps in the criteria that they set that the UK NSC sets out. So we've also helped pull together a long list of all of the research papers that have been published by kind of eminent clinicians around the world looking at SMA. And the really positive thing is that lots of countries have already started screening either through pilots or through national programs. So there's a real kind of bulk of evidence emerging to show that it really does make sense to screen newborn babies for SMA, um, both in terms of the clinical outcomes that they'll um, be able to achieve by having that early diagnosis, but also the kind of cost effectiveness of doing that as well. So it makes much more sense to get the treatment to those babies sooner rather than later. And that has a massive impact in, in kind of all aspects of the assessment. What we are waiting for is for the Sheffield team to finish this systematic literature review. Um, and then there's really a decision point. So I think what they've uncovered needs to be looked at um, and they'll be deciding whether in collaboration with UK NSC, um, who will be the ultimate decision makers, whether they need to develop 
a new economic model, so a kind of Excel spreadsheet with lots of different variables to make a judgment as to whether screening would be cost effective um, or whether they can use work that's already been done. And we're, again, working really hard to try and make sure that UK NSC has access to all of the work that's been done in this area so that they can hopefully use that work rather than starting from scratch. And I think once that has been decided on, we'll have a much clearer understanding of the full length of the assessment that's required. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Alice, thanks. That's that's really informative. Um, so, Laurent, if I may come back to you now um, for a couple of questions, particularly around uh, blood spot testing and genomic sequencing. Um, I understand that you're, you're leading a newborn blood spot pilot project. Can you just tell us a bit more about how this is progressing? Well, actually, we do indeed in the Thames Valley. And, and um, so we proposed um, mothers uh, before delivery um, to participate. And if they agree, there is nothing that is done to the baby when um, the baby is born, because we just actually take out of the normal, the standard dried blood test, because every single baby in the UK has got a dry blood test um, uh, soon after birth. We take a little bit um, of, of uh, uh, this dry blood test um, and we um, analyze it uh, in the lab. So it means that we don't take a single, a single um, um, drop of blood uh, of the, to the, uh, from the baby um, in addition of what is anyway um, collected. Um, so this happens in the Thames Valley. So far we have um, uh, screened about 8,000 newborn. Uh, which is good, but in my opinion, not enough. And, and we are limited by the consenting process. Because as you might imagine, a young lady, um, five weeks before delivering, she thinks a lot about a lot of things. And, and when you come and say, well, may I talk to you about the research? This is for screening SMA. And say, oh, research, I don't want my baby to be part in a research. Well, you know, actually, there is nothing done to your baby. It's just um, to 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 know if he is affected. But but nevertheless, um, we 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 have some ladies that are not approached for consenting because they come on a Saturday or because um, the midwife was supposed to consent them is on sick leave or on holiday. So we are missing too many um, ladies with this opt-in process. Um, and we have some refuse because it's a research. And they say, well, I don't want my baby to be part in a research, even if we do not do anything um, to the baby. The word research on, on my baby make, makes, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, creates some anxiety, if I might say. So, but what we know is, um, and what we've learned so far is that Screening for SMA in the UK, as anywhere in the world, is extremely reliable and we have no false negative, no false positive, sorry. Excellent, thank you. And just one more question for you. Um, could you clarify for some people what the difference is between this pilot and the genomic screening pilot? Oh, yeah. Um, this pilot exists right now. So it means that right now we screen for SMA in the Thames Valley. The genomic um, uh, pilot is a, is a pilot that is planned for the future, right? Um, I mean, we don't know exactly when it's going to start, maybe next year, maybe the year. I mean, we will see. Um, so that's that's a big difference. The genomic pilot is a, a pilot that will screen for a very large number of diseases. Um, we still don't know exactly which one. We still don't know exactly where. Um, so it's the difference between a project that that is currently um, uh, ongoing in a future project that will be that will be much much broader Alice I'll, I'll come back to you um I mean I believe that Dr Felicity Boardman um, and her team are running a national survey on the um, acceptability of newborn screening for SMA both to the SMA community and the public as a whole could you tell us about anything could you just tell us a bit more about that please yeah, so this work is getting underway now. It's a really exciting piece of work that's going to be really important for the UK National Screening Committee, because if you're making a decision about newborn screening, it doesn't just affect those people who get a positive diagnosis through that, pro that process. It also impacts 
everybody um, who's had a baby because you have to make a decision whether or not you want your child to have that um, blood spot test. And then the screening committee has to be confident that there won't be a huge number of um, false positives and things like that. But all of these issues have to be explored with the general population to understand how the general population feels about potentially finding out that their child has SMA or finding out that um, something from that test and the, the process of going through the test. So the work that Dr. Felicity Boardman and her team are doing is really important. It's going to look at the acceptability and the social, social and ethical consequences of newborn screening for SMA. They've got a survey which they're going to be sending out to 10,000 participants um, in a range of different groups. So healthcare professionals who are involved in newborn screening and SMA, the general public, um, families going through the screening process and families already living with SMA. And they'll pull all of those survey results together um, and provide some insights around um, why families are accepting or declining um, screening for SMA um, and the factors that help or hinder informed consent, which they'd have to give if they wanted to have that test for their baby. Um, and also general experience of experiences of the screening process and um, the views of families who've had a diagnosis um, via the screening pathway and, and what that means um, and whether anything needs to be done to kind of improve that experience. So um, they haven't gone live with the survey yet, but they will be doing so relatively soon. And we're really looking forward to seeing what that finds um, and how that is um, incorporated in the UK NSC's decision making. Brilliant. Thanks, Alice. Um, if I could now bring Faye into the conversation. Um, thanks ever so much for waiting patiently uh, in the wings. Um, so Muscular Just for UK has been running a survey uh, on an all-party parliamentary group report about newborn screening in the UK and in general. Can you just tell us about what questions you've been exploring and, and the relevance of this piece of work for the case for SMA? Yes, sure. Thanks, Toby. Um, so as a bit of background briefly, um, two years ago, the UK Rare Diseases Framework was published. And the purpose of this was to outline a set of national priorities for people living with rare conditions. Priority one within that framework was about getting a faster diagnosis. And as we appreciate, newborn screening is key to this. Following on from the framework being published, um, each nation came up with their own action plan about rare conditions. And a key commitment um, in the England Action Plan was improving how decisions are made about newborn screening for rare conditions. So um, Alice has um, briefly covered this, but at the moment, the situation is that there is a set of criteria for adding a rare condition to the newborn screening programme. But certain aspects of the current criteria can make it challenging for rare conditions, where due to the fact the very fact that these conditions are rare, it doesn't always exist the type or level of evidence that the, um, that the NSC asks for within the criteria. And also the process for assessing the conditions for newborn screening can be a lengthy one. So on the back of this, um, via the all-party parliamentary group on muscular dystrophy, MDUK is leading on an inquiry into newborn screening for rare conditions and the sorts of evidence and the evidence requirements for a condition to be accepted for newborn screening. And we're doing this with the support of the APPG on rare genetic and undiagnosed conditions. So in terms of what the inquiry is about, the focus of the inquiry is to gain a better understanding of the value of newborn screening for people with rare conditions and what level of evidence there should be to support a condition being added for screening. So, for instance, taking into account evidence from other countries where newborn screening studies have been carried out or where there are already effective newborn screening programmes in place and whether this type of evidence can be con considered. Although the inquiry is looking at rare conditions in general, it will have a specific focus on SMA, given that the UK NSC are currently undertaking the review of SMA. So what we're doing as part of the inquiry, we've done several things. At the end of last year, at the beginning of this year, we ran a survey and the purpose of the survey was to really gain an understanding of views from a range of stakeholders on the current criteria and evidence requirements around assessing newborn screening. 
Following that, we've held depth interviews with a variety of experts who have knowledge of the newborn screening assessment process. And then also recently, we've held a stakeholder roundtable discussion, and this was chaired by Mary Glyndon MP and Liz Twist MP, and it included charities, patient organisations and clinicians. The aim of this was really to understand um, the importance of including stakeholders who have that condition specific experience and knowledge at each stage of the assessment process for newborn screening and really sort of discuss how this can best be done. So now that we have, we've had these discussions, we've done the survey, um, our next steps are to put all of this evidence and all of these recommendations that are arising into a report and the report will then be launched at a parliamentary event and made available to members of the community as well. Brilliant. Great, thank you. Um, I mean, that's a report that we definitely need to keep our eyes peeled for. Um, and it's it's a really important piece of research for the for the community. Um, so yeah, Alice, I'll, I'll come back to you if I may. I mean, the Alliance clearly has a really important role ensuring that the NSC committee has all of the relevant evidence um, when it meets. Can you just tell us uh, what other work has been going on or is planned? Um, and if there are any ways that the community can help to achieve newborn screening for, for SMA within the UK? Yeah, so we've been really busy um, since we started looking at this, agreeing what our key messages are, because I think there's something really important about everybody singing from the same hymn sheet and you know this is quite a complicated area for people who've never come across it before or perhaps haven't kind of had conversations about newborn screening and or SMA before so we need to make sure that we're really clear in what we're saying and um, we'll be sharing some of those messages on our website soon in a bit more detail so people can use them in their own communications um, We've also been using uh, those messages to speak to as many stakeholders that we think are as important as possible. So that includes um, members of parliament. Um, we identified people that have an interest in newborn screening and rare conditions or SMA in particular. Um, and we've been contacting all of those um, in writing, but also following up with phone calls to try and um, get our points across. Um, we also have been speaking to people who are involved um, on the periphery of the decision making. So NHS England are really important because they will have to operationalise newborn screening for SMA if that comes to pass. So we've been trying to understand what it is that they need to do to make sure they've done everything that they need to do on their side um, and explore how we can help them do that their piece as well. Um, and the the way that I think um, people in the community can get involved the best is coming up in the late spring. So what we're doing is to coincide with the launch of the report that Faye was just talking about, we're going to have an SMA day of action. Um, so we're going to arrange for some SMA, SMA families to attend a parliamentary event that will be um, held to launch the report that Faye and her team have been working on. Um, and that will be really important because as Faye said, SMA is the condition, the rare condition that's kind of most progressed in the NSC process at the moment. So having some families who are affected by SMA in the room during that meeting where we hope to have not just MPs, but policymakers, clinicians, you know, lots of people with an interest in rare diseases, any families that can come along with us to that event are really going to help to improve people's understanding of what it means to have a rare condition, an SMA in particular, and why newborn screening is so amazing and the difference that it can make to people if they get treatments at the right time. Um, and so one will be attending that event, but we're going to make it more of a day of action. So we want to do more than just be in the room at the event. Um, we're going to pick up um, a lot of our key messages and have them going out over social media so people who aren't able to join us in Westminster can help to kind of maximise the reach of those messages and, and spread them across their own networks. We're all going to also going to arrange um, 
some kind of draft letters so that people can contact their constituency MPs and arrange a virtual meeting with them if they're not able to ask them to meet them in Westminster. Um, And we'll be encouraging people to do things like take screenshots of those meetings and asking their MPs to put it out on their social media feeds. Um, We'll have our campaign slogan. Um, In the room um, at phase events, we'll probably have some kind of photo card or something that we'll try and encourage MPs to um, take their photo with SMA families as well and put that on social media. So we want to create a real buzz and awareness around newborn screening, the evidence required, but also what that means specifically for SMA and why it's so important to get it right for SMA, not just for future SMA babies, but also for everybody else with a rare disease who could get access to treatment at the right time just by having newborn screening. Brilliant. Thanks, Alice. Um, And Portia, could you expand on some of the other groups that we've been liaising with and some of the stories that we've been able to share? Yes, of course. Thanks, Toby. Um, Yeah, I think as um, as we've heard, we need to prove clinical and cost effectiveness for newborn screening. And I think a really powerful way of doing that is by sharing some community stories. Um, I mean, my own experience with my son Um, getting his diagnosis, it wasn't easy. And at the moment, without newborn screening, obviously we're relying on these frontline professionals um, recognizing the symptoms before we can get the treatment. Now, um, personally, we were in intensive care in a specialist hospital at just five weeks old. My son was, um, he got a cold and, and needed you know, intubation, a machine to breathe for him at five weeks old. And that was before we knew um, he had SMA. And of course, respiratory compromise is a symptom of SMA. But because he's a very bright, alert, sort of bouncy baby at the time, suspicions weren't, you know, there was one nurse in PICU who noticed his tone, but, but when he got better from the cold, we were just allowed to go home. And that's when I noticed that you know, his his movement was, was a lot worse. He couldn't hold his head up anymore. I think we saw three different health visitors before we were referred to anything. So we can't rely on frontline professionals. And even in a specialist hospital where they see SMA babies, you know, fairly regularly, even then they didn't pick it up. So it's really important that we have newborn screening. And I think, st- unfortunately, my story isn't the only story like that. And um, we have worked with uh, Treat SMA, and um, I have been um, active in, in the many wonderful social media groups there are for the SMA community, um, trying to find stories that really powerfully show the importance of newborn screening and the difference that it can make to people's lives. Um, yeah, and on our website, on the Newborn Screening Alliance website, we've got a few of these stories. And I really hope that people who make these decisions, read these stories, because it's really powerful stuff and really shows how we need to speed it up. Yes, it's with the UK Newborn Screening Committee, but with the timeline of maybe three years before they you know, have done their economic assessment and looked at all the evidence that we know is already there, um, you know, that's going to be too late for lots of babies that are born between now and, and when they finally make their decision. So yeah, thank you to all the community that have shared their stories. And if, if anybody wants to help, then do get in touch with us at the Alliance. Okay, so um, yeah, great conversation so far. Thank, thanks ever so much for, for all of your contributions. We have got some questions now from the SMA community that I'd like to, to put to you. So the first question that we've got is, um, what is being done to progress this as quickly as possible. Uh, The longer it takes, the more lives are put at risk through delayed diagnoses. Who who fancies taking that one? Shall I have a go? Shall I make a start? And then other people can jump in. So, um, well, from my perspective, the key thing is trying to encourage the UK NSC to use existing modelling work um, as part of their assessment rather than starting again from scratch. So um, if that happens, if a decision was made that um, modelling work needed to be starting from scratch, that could really add a lot of time to the timeline. Um, so that's one thing. Another thing is around 
making sure that the evidence from other countries is taken into account. So we all know that there are differences between countries. There are differences between screening programs, the processes by which those are decided. But I think the clear thing that's come out from all of the screening programs that are underway is that there aren't really false positives, not you know, by the time you get your final diagnosis, it's going to be accurate. Um, People are happy to take up newborn screening. Um, It's not a big, um, you know, it's an easy thing to have. You you might be having a heel prick test anyway, if you decided to go ahead with newborn screening. So you're not even going to know that another condition is being looked for. But the impact that this makes is huge. So as Portia says, those stories vital as well. We need to make sure that all of this evidence is really given due consideration. Um, and we're putting as much, the, the word pressure is probably not a very positive one, but we're trying to really push UK NSC to stand by their word to, you know, the need for speed with SMA. Um, and we're making sure that as many people as possible are aware of the situation as well, because I think the more support there is for this, the more likely we are to get a rapid rapid decision. Um, So evidence, awareness, and enthusiasm are the three things that we're using to just try and, you know, really raise this up the agenda and make sure that there aren't unnecessary delays. Does anyone have anything to add? Um, I would just say I'm looking forward to the parliamentary event because if we can get, you know, a good amount of families coming along to Parliament and and those, you know, important influential people can actually see how it affects people's real lives, I think that will make a really big difference. Um, and hopefully the NSC will, will come and, and listen to that. Yeah, and just to pick up on to pick up on what Portia's saying. So Portia and I have been in meetings together and Portia's been able to introduce policymakers to Ezra, her son. And like you say, Portia, it really brings to life um what it means to have SMA, both for the child with SMA, for their family. And I think when people see words on a sheet of paper, it just doesn't have the same effect. So bringing community stories to life is one of the key tools that we have in our toolbox. And we're doing our absolute best to showcase those stories and make people understand the issues. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Let's go on to the next question. so why are so many other countries already doing this and why are we not doing it in the UK? That's a good question. <laughs> good question. <laughs> well, as shall I, shall I start again or does someone else want to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So as, as I said when we were answering the last question, all different countries have different processes and procedures for agreeing whether or not newborn screening should happen for a particular condition. In the UK, we have a very rigorous process, um, which has lots of different elements to it. And I think when a decision is made to add something to the newborn screening programme in the UK, there is no doubt that every stone has been unturned and, you know, we're 100% sure that that's the right thing to do. Um, I think there are cases of conditions where <clears throat> there perhaps isn't as clear cut a decision as there is for SMA. So as a lay person looking at the evidence and the impact, looking at the work that's been done around clinical and cost effectiveness modeling of newborn screening, it's really hard to say this is not a good idea. So I think some com- countries have taken a more progressive approach and rather than spending a long time on the decision-making process, they've decided to pilot newborn screening for SMA to understand you know, what happens on the ground. Um, and that's, that's why we've been able to start getting evidence fairly quickly after the arrival of new treatments to the impact mm. of newborn screening for SMA. Um, And then there are other countries who've kind of fast-tracked their appraisal, their kind of more formal appraisal um, that we do here in the UK um, and have used that to kind of get screening up and running more quickly. So part of it is about a level of ambition. Um, I think we've had some, some challenges in the UK because of 
administrative issues. So Public Health England, where newborn screening, the UK NSC used to sit, um, has been, you know, it is no more. Um, so newborn screening committee moved into DHSC. And I think that did cause a bit of a delay with the start of the assessment. Um, but we're up and running now. So we just need to look at what's out there apply it to the UK and make this decision as soon as possible. Yeah, Great, thank you. I, I agree. I think it would be really nice if the MDUK um, report just highlights the fact that there should be a, a, a more streamlined process for rare diseases like SMA. When you've got a treatment that's licensed and you've got, you know, children that, you know, every day counts in SMA. And it would be really great if the UK NSC recognised that and did a similar thing to like NICE do with highly specialist technologies where there's not a lot of evidence in rare diseases. They will, you know, put the drug on a managed access agreement and then continue to collect data. And that means people can access the treatment more quickly. That's the kind of approach we would like to see the UK um, newborn screening committee take with rare diseases like SMA. Brilliant. Well, thanks ever so much. Um, thank you, Alice. Thank you, Faye, uh, Laurent and Portia for joining us on this, this webinar today. Um, and thank you for tuning in. Uh, hopefully you've got some interesting information and insights um, that you can take away. Uh, and if you do need support from SMA UK, then please do reach out to us uh, by contacting the office. Uh, you can reach us through our website. You can contact, you can phone us, you can email us, but we are there to help and support you. Um, until next time, thank you very much and take good care of yourself.